And welcome back, everyone, to the Pokemon Team Creation Series. Today's Pokemon Team Creation Series suggestion comes to us from Gamer Forever, who asked the question, what is Gomez Adams' Pokemon Team? I've done Wednesday, I've done Morticia, now we're on to the dad. I'm sure we'll get the Pugsley, Lurch, Mama, Cousin It. Actually, did I do Cousin It already? I don't think I did. But we'll get to all of them eventually. Unlike his wife, Gomez turned out to be a little tricky. Now, there's one or two that just immediately came to mind when I thought of Gomez. But I, I, I couldn't go with very much beyond for his, like, say, abilities as a human being. I had to lean more towards his personality and his familiar relations a little bit. So let's get one of the automatic ones out of the way. One of the things Gomez is best known for is being a swordsman. He's actually a very skilled swordsman. He claims to be skilled in any weapon, but he's actually confirmed, because we've seen it, a very skilled swordsman. And I did, even though we don't usually see him dual wield, I did want to go with a dub blade for this. I didn't think a hone edge was good enough. I also don't think a ki I think an Aegis Slash is right in that sense either. Uh, so I think uh, dub blade is perfect for that because i think dubblade works well in conjunction with morticia like even though the dubblade is one pokemon the two blades could be like them together fighting together as one because morticia is also highly skilled in sword combat as well that was pretty much it for the easy ones though um now as it went on i was kind of able to find something uh, other mod that fit the bill obviously starting with the fact that one of the big things is cousin it uh, how do you do, like, he, I feel like at, at least some members of his family make sense to be in there, and Cousin It is certainly one of them, but what do you do for a Cousin It Pokemon? It's obviously a Pokemon that needs to be covered in fur, have his, their real body hidden. I actually thought Tangrowth might not be a bad option for that, even though it's not covered in hair, its vines act like hair, it is a Pokemon where we still, to this day, don't know what Tangle looks like underneath that ball. Or if we, uh, you know, hold on one second. What does Tangrowth look like under, uh, what does Tangrowth look like? I'm going to look that up right now, see if there's actually an answer. What does Tangrowth, um, uh, uh, Tangrowth, not Tangrowth evolve into, but Tangrowth look like, uh, without vines? All right. Is there an actual answer to this? Uh, Dang's Tangla. Uh, is a round shape, but it's unknown what it looks like without them. It always hides the vine. So both Tangrowth and Tangela are unknown what they look like underneath there. There are definitely theories to what it is. Like, it may look a bit like an Oddish. It may look a bit like, um, I mean, like a Voltor, but like a pitch black Voltor. It could be a number of things, really. But, um, yeah, I, I thought Tangrowth for a little bit, but I'm like, uh we don't even really see Cousin It's eyes. We just see his glasses, usually. So, I decided to go a different way. I stick with the fur, something that's kind of hidden under its fur. I went with Piloswine. It's a it's a mod I think works a little bit better. It's a giant mound of fur. Its eyes, while well, you can see them if he flaps up his eyelashes, which I think is, those are what those are, his eyelashes. Um, he's still, he's still a mod that's basically just covered in fur, and you can't find him under all that. If I were to think on it long and hard. I could probably think of other Mon that are almost as equivalent, but I think that works good enough. Plus, it's about as close to the same color of hair as Cousin It is usually depicted as. Next up, though, I also, in key keeping with the Swordsman, went with the one Swordsman I know exists in Pokemon, Surfetched. The idea being that he is more prone to using one sword, even though he doesn't usually use a shield. He's a very adventuresome thrill-seeking individual, he's still very chivalrous. He still defends his, his wife's honor. He still is the protector of his household. He is the matriarch of, uh, sorry, the patriarch of his household. He loves his family. So, I went with that. Kind of like the little noble knight. And to keep with that, I also went with Gallade, who is very much a almost superhero-esque individual who will come to the aid of others. Uh, and is the counterpart to Gardevoir, who I can't recall if I put on Go uh, Morticia's team or not. Even if I did not, I would say that they would be do good counterparts for each other. So I put the Gallade on there as well. Plus, being a fighting type, I felt, felt worked well. They are the best examples I could give to kind of Pokemon fighting types. A little, that thrill he gets, you know, in just being in dangerous situations. Due to the fact that 
I mean, I couldn't put a... I was trying to find Pokemon that kind of looked for fights that were seeking combat. That's not as easy to find as you think. There are definitely Pokemon that do that. Seeking challengers, all that. But... Uh, there's no real Daredevil Pokemon yet. There's no Pokemon that just is doing things for the sheer thrill of doing them, which is what Gomez's personality is really like. Uh, he's a he's a co consummate thrill seeker. Next on the list, though, I had Mousehold, the uh, do, uh, two kid version, due to the fact that him and Morticia are parents of two children, um, and they apparently have a very uh, very active and robust and healthy sex life, which good for them. Um, <clears throat> but I, uh, with Mal Mousel's one I've been wanting to kind of put on a team for a while now, and, uh, like, Morticia, if I were to redo Morticia's team, I definitely would consider putting Mousehold on the team, because they would go hand-in-hand, hand, literally, with each other here, but I think Mousehold works good, just the family unit. But last but not least, though, and this was the last mod I added to the team, and this mod follows a very interesting kind of mindset. So oh, I'm at the point making this team where I'm like, okay, I got the sword, I got the fighter, I got the thrill seeking, I got the family uh, unit in more ways than one in there. I could put uh, Uncle Fester somewhere in there, but there's no way I can figure out an Uncle Fester based Pokemon. Uh, think, let me know what you think Uncle Fe the Pokemon that best represents Uncle Fester is. Uncle Fester would be another team entirely at another point in time. Um... Let me know what you think the uh, team for that would be. but Or the, uh, not team, but the uh, the mod that represents Uncle Fester. I'm like, okay, what else do we got here? Um, they all love the macabre on some level, but there's not much I can really do for him. The macabre really leans itself more towards Wednesday and Morticia. Not to say that he, uh, Gomez, is against the macabre. No, he's very much for He's very much loves the macabre, just like his wife and family do. It's just he has other interests. And I recalled something from the series, but the movies, the show, all that. And it's him playing with his trains. And him playing with his trains is him basically just blowing up trains on a train set, which is awesome. Um, but I'm like, okay, what could I do with that? What could, is, there's no real train Pokemon. There is no Pokemon that, there's like no R Rotom form that's like a train, for example. Even though that would be pretty cool. Uh, and I even, I've even seen fake road on farms or, um, he, they do fuse with a train, which w again, would be pretty cool, but no. So what is the, what is the best representation of something to do with trains? And I thought on this for a little bit and I came to this conclusion. This would be something that really would be more aiding him in his day-to-day -day life. Meltan, another mod I had never, I put Mel Metal on the table a couple times, but not uh, Meltan, but why Meltan? First and foremost, he's this little amorphous blob with a little head, and he's got a little tail. He's, he's kind of cute, and he turns into a big male male. He's adorable. Male male town is adorable. But Meltan is no is infamous for just consuming metal. It just eats metal, which leads people to theorize that uh, Mel Metal is probably actually made of gallium, which is a metal that can literally eat through other metals. Um. I believe that's what they theorize uh, he's made out of. I believe that's the metal. And I believe I am thinking of gallium. Uh, gallium. Gallium. <laughs> the metal that uh, eats other metal. It's called gallium. Gallium. Let's see. Gallium metal. Uh, I might pro I'm probably uh, misspelling gallium. Oh, wait, I forgot the E. Or, sorry, I forgot the I. Uh, gas off. Liquid metal. It's never said it's liquid state. And silvery white. Enough force. Uh, I believe it is uh, metal-eating uh, metal, metal. Let me try putting metal-eating metal, because I uh, I'm sidetracking, but I, um, metal-eating metal. All right. Yep, it is gallium. Yep, I was thinking of the right metal. Uh, so yeah, gallium is one of those things that can have a solid form, but the minute you get to, like, room temperature, it will just start to melt, and it eats through most metals, <laughs> or at least most weaker metals. Uh, like, if you put it against steel, I don't know how it would fare against steel, but, uh, like, like steel um, beams. But I think it still can eat through that, uh, which makes it a very impressive metal in many ways. And I believe it's used for many different sort of uh, chemi uh, chemical um, experiments. But the reason I chose Mel Meltan on here is very, is actually very simple. He's the mod he has. So he's, like, he may even has his own little train conductor hat. He's like pumping. He's like there. He's enjoying the trains. But when he knows Gomez, ha Gomez is having a bad day, he's there to comfort him as well. 
And at the end of the day, he always does what his job is to do. He eats up the scraps of metal from the train so Gomez doesn't have to clean anything up. I mean, he spits out the stuff he can't eat, but he eats the stuff that he's allowed to eat, and he's very happy. And he's always there, and they always give him, like, spork, forks and spoons at dinner and all that, even a knife with, like, your dessert, here's some coins. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like he, he'd basically kind of be a family pet kind of Pokemon. He really wouldn't be used for combat that much, not to say he couldn't fight. It's just he's not really... That's not what he would be on his team for. But that ultimately would be my team for Gomez Adams. That being said, though, what uh, what is uh, what is the question I always ask? How balanced is the team? And with this team, we have a Ghost Steel type, a Pure Steel type, a Ice Ground type, a Pure Normal type, a Pure Fighting type, and a Psychic Fighting type. When I was going through this, I actually quickly came to the conclusion that this is actually one of the most balanced teams I've ever done. Because normally when I'm doing these types of lists, there's always one type that's usually running through half this team. Like, there's like say, Fairy will run through half of the team because half the team's Dragon or something like that. But here, if we really break it down, Honedge and, um, and, uh, Honedge, sorry, Dublade and Meltan are the only Steel types on the team, which primary weaknesses are Fire and, um, Fire and Ground and Fighting. Well, the Ground type is, uh, will hurt both of them, sure, fire will hurt both of them, but fighting, so Dublade's immune to that. I mean, Dublade's also immune to normal, and it's immune to poison. Now, the one argument you could make here is that fire would be maybe ha a problem for the team because Piloswine is ice type, and that is, is that's entirely true. But the fact is, it's also part ground type, and ground type is strong against fire, which means fire becomes neutral to Piloswine. So, okay, what about Pilosine's weaknesses beyond that? Uh, and the honest truth is, except for fighting types, uh, ground type is strong against, I believe ground is strong against uh, rock, or at least it's resistant to rock. But even so, um, yeah, fighting is really the only main issue. Flying is neutral, more or less. Uh, and flying can hurt, will hurt... Um, Surfetched, I guess flying is a minor problem for the team because technically psychic is not is just neutral to flying. I always think psychic is strong against flying, but it's actually neutral. Uh, so I guess you could make an argument for flying being a problem for this team, but even steel types aren't a big problem for uh, for like say Palo Swine because ground is strong against steel. Mousehold only has really one weakness, and that's with fighting types. It's immune to ghost types, but the ghost types are immune to it, so it's completely neutral. Uh, Gallade and Surfetch, both uh, Surfetch is uh, is strong against dark types. It's strong against rock types, strong against ice types, strong against steel types. Same with Gallade, and Gallade, even though it's psychic, because it's fighting, it mitigates the weakness to dark types. So, I mean, there's not much. It, it, there's not much really to that all of the overall teams there's not much that hurts the overall team in terms of one typing the best case answer you could maybe make an argument for is either fire or flying and even then that's a best case answer i'm not saying this is the most balanced team ever made uh i'm not even saying this is the most balanced team ever period what i am saying though is that uh it's fairly balanced like there's no doesn't seem to be really more than two weaknesses per mon that are shared um, although, I, to be fair, I should actually take that back. I just realized now that, yeah, because Mousehold is weak to fighting, fighting types are at least semi a problem for this team, because Piloswine does not have a resistance, or a, uh, is not neutral to fighting. It is still weak to fighting. So, okay, I do have to take that back. Fighting is probably the one clear-cut answer as a weakness to this team. Flying, you can make an argument, definitely, and that, that'd really be it. Um, fire is only kind of a problem. And yeah, any other any other issues this team has, it's going to be um, it's going to be more minor. You're gonna just have to have good Pokemon then to beat it. Anyway, though, I digress. What do you think of this team? Do you like this team? Do you hate this team? Let me know in the comments below. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.